Uh, to talk about transition metals, uh, we have to talk about their properties. The first is definition of transition, and that's when you have multiple or variable oxidation states. So it is a property in itself. Let's just look at it. So we are going to look at period four, and, uh, and we are going to pick D block elements. Now transition metal by definition should have at least one oxidation state with partially filled D orbital. First thing I did in that row is I'm going to highlight zinc uh, and I wrote it in white to say it is not a transition metal. It's only a D block element. So if you are transition metal, you definitely are D block, but you could be one D block that is not transition metal. Why is that? Because zinc only has one oxidation state, two plus, and if you remove the electrons first, you have to remove it from 4S. You see 3D is completely filled up. So by definition, it's not a transition metal. The rest are transition metals. I also put two elements in green, chromium and, and copper. To remember, they were anomalies. 4S only has one electrons rather than double electrons before they go to 3D. So also remember that. Now let's just pick and choose one element and talk about variable oxidation states. I'll go after manganese, which shows the maximum 7 plus. So let's just look at manganese. Now manganese, when you do electron configuration, it's argon, the first 18 electron are inner, then it's 4s2, you fill that up first, 3d5. So what happens is we put uh, electrons in order of aqua. Uh, P has three orbitals, maximum of six electrons. 4s, we fill it up, 3d, same thing, they pair up. And up to here, this is electron configuration of argon. Now we go to 4s, one electron, two electrons, and the remainder will go into D, but they will go singly with their spin up according to Hans rule. Now what happens is all this 4s and 3d, these, these are your valence shells. So you can form, definitely they always form two plus and other oxidation states. 2 plus is when you have lost your 4s completely and you have five electrons left in D. You could also form Mn3 plus which is argon. 4s is just a placement, there is no electron in it, 3d4. So you could have M, uh, Mn4 plus, 5 plus, 6 plus, 7 plus. Let's go to the maximum which manganese shows that 7 plus is argon and there is no more valence shells so 4s is 0 3d is 0. now why is that because 4s and 3d are very close in proximity so you really don't need that much energy to remove them so rather than saying 4s is my valence shell we can say 4s and 3d collectively are valence shells another argument is also their Ionization energies or successive ionization energies are very close uh, in kilojoules. So you really don't need that many kilojoules to remove the remainder of electrons. So what can we say? We can say that transition metals technically you can lose all the electrons, uh, can lose all of their valence electrons. They always show plus two because 4s is lost completely first. Manganese has the highest oxidation state of plus seven, and copper is also the only one that shows plus one. So if you go from scandium, that scandium, uh, nowadays we call it a typical transition metal. Back in the days, it was just like zinc. We didn't call it transition metals. Now we are including. If you look at scandium up to manganese, they increase in, in uh, losing valence electrons. Manganese shows the maximum and then there is a decline, they go back. Iron has plus three plus two, cobalt has plus two, nickel plus two, copper plus two, it also shows a plus one. This is the only transition metal that you have plus one for. Zinc is not a transition metal, has plus two. By the way, the, the more positive charge you are, the smaller you are, the more covalency you have rather than ionic tendency. 